This is gonna take you five days, so don't say I didn't warn you. When Peking duck is done right, it's a very special thing. It's one of my favorite dishes and my favorite way to eat duck. I would go to Chinese restaurants and I'd order it all the time. Everywhere I went, if it was on the menu, I got it. Sometimes it's incredible, but sometimes it's not so good. So I wanted to develop a recipe that you could do at home and every time it's incredible. You're gonna have super crispy, glassy back skin and really nice pink, tender breast meat. I'm not gonna lie to you, Peking duck is a very complex recipe. The places that make it great, break it up into steps and put the time and attention to each of them. So plan in advance, clean out your fridge, let's make Peking duck. Here's our duck. This is a Peking duck. So two main things to keep in mind when selecting a duck. You like to have it head on, it makes it easier to hang, as well as you need to select a duck which is lean. Like right here, that's a good example. You can actually see through it down to the meat. If there's too much fat, the skin is not gonna be crispy. All set, let's clean up the duck. Okay, so now we're just looking for patches of feathers that were not removed. So now we're gonna remove the excess fat right here. Very easy to do, you're moving by hand and you don't need a knife to do this. Okay, duck's clean. Let's start making our five spice rub. First, we're going to mix together the spices. It's gonna get real. Just rubbing the inside, coating it, getting the flavor in there. If you get some of the rub on the skin, don't worry about it because we're gonna be blanching it shortly and it'll come right off. With this trusty bamboo skewer, we're gonna sew this guy up. So start at the top, go about a centimeter out. So you go over, over. Okay, and then we're gonna go all the way through the tail. Okay, now it's time to separate the skin from the flesh below it. We're gonna show you the ultimate way of doing that, and that is with an air compressor. So what I like to do is cover up the bottom here, we kind of trap the air in and we don't blow out any of the nice um, hoisin five spice rub that we put in there. So we're gonna come in through the neck here. Okay, ready? and we're gonna separate the back skin now. Just above the meat right here, I wanna make a little slit, and that's where the nozzle's gonna go in. Towel on top. And since there's an opening in the neck over here, I just like to pinch that. You can tell that it's separate now. If you look at it, you feel all the air below it. Check out the joint in there, find it. And now, we're just gonna poach the outside. I prefer basting it like this instead of submerging it because I don't want the cavity of the bird to fill up with water because it's just gonna wash away all the nice flavor that we put in there. So you really wanna incorporate the flavor that's in this broth. Surprisingly, there is a lot. The more you do this, the more the skin will get a light amber color. Just about a minute and a half on each side. The next step is to make a glaze. Start with the maltose syrup. It's gonna help us get a nice mahogany color. I like to add some soy sauce too. We have our glaze that's slightly warm. This is a, just to help us get our first coat on here. Um, so we will have two coats per side. Don't worry about it being super even. The weight of the syrup will like, cause it to drip down and it will naturally even itself out. So now I have a, th um, a thin first coating on the bird. To get a thicker second one, I'm just gonna chill down my maltose syrup slightly. 
So this will continue to drip off when it's in the fridge. Right now it's super sticky. We'll know that it's starting to dry out nicely in the fridge when it gets a nice tacky texture. One more step and that'll be it for day one. Grab a skewer and stick it into each wing. This will help spread the skin across the back, making it crispier when you fry it. We're gonna hang the duck from the top. If you can't hang it, prop it up in a pan so you get more airflow around it, helping dry the skin out. So the salt has been pulling out a lot of moisture from the bird. You can kind of see it kind of drying out a bit here. So it's kind of filled with moisture in the cavity. We want to get rid of that. Okay, time to smoke it. So now we have some wood chips here and we're gonna get them starting to smolder with this blowtorch here. We're gonna put them in this top left-hand corner up by the neck. This neck meat is not gonna yield that great a skin because there's a lot of fat beneath it. So this is the area of the bird that we can sacrifice. So now we're gonna need to make a hole over here for ventilation. It's been 10 minutes. We're gonna check on our wood chips. They need to be relit. So we are done smoking. Remove the foil. We don't want to wrap it too tight because we want the steam to be able to escape. Traditionally, Peking ducks are cooked while being hung in an oven. So how we get around that is every 30 minutes or 15 minutes or so, we like to hang the bird. Okay, it's been 15 minutes. So what you should be seeing right now is little pockets of fat kind of starting to surface here. The overall surface of the bird should still look very, very dry. This is good. So it's been 30 minutes in the oven. There's been lots of fat that is rendered out. So now we want to get rid of that. We don't want the breast to be frying in the bottom. We're going to hang it up. We're going to allow a lot of the moisture and fat that's trapped just beneath the skin to come out the bottom. That's going to help us get our nice crispy skin. and put them back into a dry pan, back side up again. At this stage, we're getting rid of these last little bits of fat and crisping up the skin. So now we're at the end of the second roast, and we're gonna hang it for the final time just before we fry it. Set the feet down in the oil. And gently ladle some super hot oil. So I first like to do an overall coating, and then I like to go towards the blonder areas. You'll see the skin pull away like that. That's a really good sign. All right, it's looking good. Dang, look at that skin. Now I'm going to show you how to carve it up to make the most out of all the crispy goodness. I like to work on a towel so it doesn't get soggy on the skin side. Cutting the head off. What we first want to do is get the back skin off while it's still crispy. Um, what I like to do is remove the wing so you have better access to that. So, carve around the skin. So we're just basically cutting a pattern all the way around the bird. That's like perfect. That's as good as it gets. We've taken all of the back skin off, and then we're gonna remove this little bamboo skewer. This is called Ben's chair. It's his favorite little lollipop part. And then we're gonna remove the breasts and then cut up the legs. There you have it. That's how you make incredible Peking duck at home. Juicy breasts and crispy, delicious back skin. With a little patience and a lot of love, you can serve your friends a delicious feast.
So go on, make Peking duck, serve it with some steam buns, it's worth it.